In this video, you'll be introduced to the BIME Query Builder, in which we're going to start to create our first query. To do so, we need to first load some data into the Query Builder. Here I have an Excel file, so I'm going to select it and select New Query. We're now in the Query Builder. To start creating our first query, the first thing we're going to need is a measure. So to add a measure into my query, I'm going to go here and select my measure. What we're seeing now is the sum of our revenue, but we also have other aggregators available like average, count, minimum and maximum. To build up this query further, I can add elements to columns. Here I'm going to add the year and month of our bill date. And here we see the result. You may have noticed that the visualization type changed from a simple KPI visualization to an area chart. This is because by default, the visualization type is set to auto. This means that BIME will try and guess which is the best visualization type that fits with the elements that you've put onto the query itself. However, you can turn it into a different visualization type from here. You can work with measures in different ways in BIME. For example, we can use color encoding. Here, I'm going to select a second measure in color encoding. And here's the result. You can see that the columns are coded in terms of their level of, in this case, staff costs. We can also use size encoding. So here, let's add travel expenses. The result is now that the width of each of the columns is indicated by the travel expenses. There are other ways of working with measures in BIME, such as using a dual axis. Let's start by putting bank charges into this query. We'll be able to see that both of these measures are in the query side by side, but we can't see bank charges very easily because it's sharing the same scale as revenue. In this case, by adding bank charges into a dual axis, a second y-axis is created on the right-hand side just for that measure. It allows us to see both of these measures clearly in the visualization. Trend lines can also be added to your charts. Now let's take a look at different ways that we can filter the results of our query. We'll start by adding an attribute into rows. When we do so, we'll be presented with what we call a row selector in the top left hand corner of our chart. From here, I can click on the different values to filter the chart accordingly. Or by clicking on the title, I can select all values in my department attribute. Another way to filter your query would be to add an attribute into the explosions part of the query builder. In this case, what we are seeing is a different filtered version of the chart for every value within our explosions attribute, sales, support, and technical. And finally, another way to filter would be to add an attribute into the filter section of the query builder. From here, if I wanted to see my charts filtered by specific values, I can do so like so. By clicking on and opening up other attributes in your query, you can choose to select and exclude values as well. In this case, we have a date range filter that can be applied wherever we have elements of a temporal dimension. So for example, I could apply a simple or an advanced range to filter the data on that particular range. Here, I'm going to just filter by last year and that filter will be applied. 